Okay, let's continue with the second half of section 7.1. We're going to pick up where we lift off. Let's look at balancing equations with fractional intermediates. So let's look at something like ethane. So you may have noticed in the previous examples we did, we, you know, we all, it always worked out nicely with whole numbers. And when we balance equations, we want the equations with the lowest whole number coefficients. But you may run into problems, especially with combustion reactions, where it doesn't work out quite so cleanly with lowest whole number coefficients. So let's look at an example of this. So here, again, we've got a combustion reaction of ethane. So we've got ethane, C2H6, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. So again, I'm going to start with carbon. I'm going to place a 2 in front of CO2 to balance out carbon. So now I've got two carbon atoms on both sides, and now I have five oxygen atoms on the right side. Next, I'm going to go to hydrogen. I've got six hydrogens on the left side, so I need to place a three in front of H2O to balance this out. Now I've got six hydrogen atoms on both sides. But you'll notice I've got a bit of a problem here. So after placing that three in front of H2O, I have seven oxygen atoms on the right side. So carbon's balanced, hydrogen's balanced. I've got seven oxygen atoms on the right side, two on the left. So what you need to do here is to get this to get this to balance is first you place a seven halves coefficient. So if you place a seven halves coefficient, you get seven oxygen atoms on the left side. So start by placing that fractional coefficient in here just to get it to balance. Now both sides are balanced but they are not all whole numbers. So then what we need to do is we need to multiply all coefficients by two to get our final equation. So we multiply all of our coefficients by two, and right here, this is the final answer I would expect if I gave you a problem like this on the exam. 2C2H6, 7O2, 4CO2, and 6H2O. One thing I also want to mention is you must use the smallest whole number ratios. So when you balance equations, make sure you are using the smallest whole number ratios as coefficients. So for example, if you balance this reaction, so it's nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas to form ammonia, if you ended up with an answer like this, well this is a good starting point, but you should notice that all these coefficients are divisible by three. So divide them all by three, and the final answer I would expect would be 1N2 plus 3H2O forms 2NH3. All right, let's have you try a knowledge check question. What are the stoichiometric coefficients required to balance the following equation? So this is the combustion reaction of this hydrocarbon, C6H14. Okay. And the correct answer is C, 2, 19, 12, 14. So when you first went through this, you probably or hopefully ended up with a coefficient of six here on H2O and seven on H, or excuse me, six on CO2 and seven on H2O. So this resulted in there being 19 oxygen atoms on the right side. So then you needed to place a coefficient of 19 halves in front of O2 then multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that fractional coefficient. So we get 2, 19, 12, and 14 as our final answer. Okay, a little bit more additional information. You may have noticed by now we are using labels to indicate the physical state. So we've talked about solid, liquid, and gas already. S solid, L liquid, G gas. One more coefficient I want to mention that you're going to begin to notice, or you should have noticed at this point, is parentheses AQ. This means aqueous, which means dissolved in water. So for example, NaOH gets parentheses AQ. So what this means is it's some amount of sodium hydroxide dissolved in water. So it gets parentheses AQ, not parentheses L. You may also notice the this little delta sign, this little triangle. This Typically, it's written above the arrow, and it means heat. So for example, this reaction, this would be calcium carbonate, is heated, and it decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. All right, let's look at ionic reactions. So in a molecular equation, compounds, they are represented by chemical formulas as though they exist in solution as molecules or formula units. However, in reality, ionic compounds, they break up into individual ions when they are dissolved in water. So when you see an ionic compound that has an AQ next to them, Again, we typically write it as you know, CaCl2Aq or AgNO3Aq. 
We write it like this because it makes things easy in our chemical or our molecular equations, but in reality, when calcium chloride is dissolved in water, it does not stay together like this. It breaks apart into its ions. Same thing here with silver nitrate, same thing with calcium nitrate. These will break apart into their ions if they have the phase or state of matter symbol AQ next to them. So what we need to do here is we need to take our molecular equations and we need to generate complete ionic equations. So in a complete ionic equation, compounds that exist or uh, that exist completely or predominantly as ions are represented as those ions. So in that previous example, that reaction between aqueous calcium chloride and aqueous silver nitrate, we have three aqueous ionic compounds, calcium chloride, silver nitrate, and calcium nitrate. So what you need to do is you need to take those compounds and you need to break them apart into their ions. So the aqueous species are represented as follows. Calcium chloride breaks apart into a calcium ion and two chloride ions. So you notice here that subscripts become coefficients. Here, silver nitrate, we, so we have a two. So we get two silver ions and two nitrate ions. And then with calcium nitrate, we get one calcium ion and two nitrate ions. So when we take that molecular equation here, we take anything that's ionic and aqueous and we break it into its ions. CaCl2 breaks into Ca2 plus and 2 Cl minus. 2 AgNO3 breaks into 2 Ag plus and 2 NO3 minus. And on the right side, CaNO3 2 breaks into Ca2 plus and 2 NO3 minus. Now this is an ionic compound, but it uses the state of matter symbol S, so you do not break it apart. So this right here, this is the complete ionic equation for this reaction. So we would call this the balanced chemical equation or the balanced molecular equation. This is the complete ionic equation. Again, I just want to mention coefficients apply to all ions in the compound and subscript be subscripts become coefficients in front of the individual ion. Make sure you only break apart compounds that are, are ionic and that have AQ next to them. If it's not ionic, don't break it apart. If it doesn't have AQ next to them, don't break it apart. Okay, finally, the point of all this is we want to generate the net ionic equation. So an equation that includes only the species that are actually involved in the reaction is called a net ionic equation. So ions that appear on both sides of the complete ionic equation are called spectator ions. Spectator ions are not, not actually participating in the reaction. So if we look at our complete ionic equation here, you want to look for ions that are the same on both sides of the equation. This means they are not actually participating in the reaction, they're just kind of floating around in the solution. So I spot two spectator ions. First, I notice calcium. Second, I notice nitrate. Notice how Ca2 plus is the same on both sides and 2NO3 minus, it is the same on both sides. So we can cancel them out, just cross them out. And so what are we left with? 2Cl minus plus 2Ag plus forms 2AgCl. So this right here is our net ionic equation. Typically it involves a cation and an anion on the left side coming together to make a solid ionic compound on the right side. So this, again above, this was our complete ionic equation this is the net ionic equation. Now a few more tips for net ionic equations. First, you wanna make sure that you start with a balanced molecular equation. And if you do, your complete ionic equation should be balanced and your net ionic equation should also be balanced. Typically, things that are AQ on the right side will cancel out with something on the left side, so it can be quickest to check for those first. And when you get to that final step at the end, sometimes you can simplify the coefficients. So our net ionic equation, all three species here had a coefficient of two. So we can simplify that and give this as our answer. Cl minus AQ plus AG plus AQ forms AGCL, parenthesis S. Okay, let's look at an equation that kind of mixes both together. It's a molecular and ionic equation example. Here, this problem states, when carbon dioxide is dissolved in an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide, the mixture reacts to yield aqueous sodium carbonate and liquid water. Write balanced molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic equations for this process. All right, well first it says when carbon dioxide is dissolved. 
So what that means is CO2 is aqueous here. CO2 is aqueous. It's like when you drink, uh, you know, a soda or some sort of sparkling drink, some sort of carbonated drink. This is just dissolved carbon dioxide. So CO2 gets the state of matter symbol aqueous here. Now it's dissolved in an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide. So that would be NaOH parenthesis AQ. And then what's being produced? Well, it, it reacts to yield aqueous sodium carbonate. So that would be Na2CO3 AQ and liquid water. So H2O L. So this is our unbalanced equation. Next, we need to balance that chemical equation. So I've got one carbon atom on both sides. I've got three oxygen atoms on the left, four on the right, one sodium on the left, two on the right, one hydrogen on the left, two on the right. And then you notice here the OH breaks apart. It's not the same on both sides. The CO3 is not the same on both sides. So you can't keep any of those polyatomic ions together. You need to break everything down into its component atoms. So here, I would probably start with sodium. So I've got one sodium on the left, two on the right. So I'm gonna place a two in front of NaOH. So this gives me two sodium atoms on the left. Now I have four oxygen atoms on the left and I have two hydrogen atoms on the left. And it actually looks like that's all I needed to do. Now I've got one carbons on both sides, four oxygen atoms on both sides, two sodiums on both sides and two hydrogens on both sides. So that was it, that was all I needed to do. And I have now balanced my chemical or I balanced my molecular equation. Next, I wanna to go to writing my complete ionic equation. So this is where I need to break apart anything that is an aqueous ionic compound. So here on the left side, carbon dioxide is aqueous, but this is not an ionic compound. This is a covalent compound, so I cannot break it apart. Here, I've got sodium hydroxide. This is an ionic compound and it's aqueous, so I can break this one apart into its ions. And then on the right side, I've got a liquid, can't touch that. And I've got sodium carbonate. This is an ionic compound and it's aqueous. So I can break this into its ions and I can break this compound into its ions. So this gives me my complete ionic equation, CO2Aq plus 2Na plus Aq plus 2OH minus Aq forms 2Na plus Aq plus CO3 2 minus, that's carbonate Aq plus H2O liquid. Okay, now I'm gonna look for spectator ions. So here I see only one spectator ion and it is Na plus. Na plus is the same on both sides of the equation. That is my only spectator ion. So final step, I've got CO2 plus 2OH minus forms CO3 2 minus and H2O. This right here is my net ionic equation. So to recap, this is my balanced chemical or my balanced molecular equation. This is the complete ionic equation and this is the net ionic equation. Okay, let's have you try a knowledge check question. What is the net ionic equation for the reaction between sodium chloride and silver nitrates? Okay, the correct answer here is B. Ag plus plus Cl minus forms AgCl. This is pretty similar to one of the questions we looked at earlier. These two compounds can both be broken apart into its ions. This compound breaks apart into its ions. Your spectator ions would be sodium and nitrate, which cancel out, just leaving this as your net ionic equation. Silver plus chloride forms silver chloride. Okay, so here are three practice problems to try. So pause the video, give the, take a few minutes, take five to 10 minutes, however long it takes you. Try these practice problems, see how well you understand the material from this section. And I do also wanna highlight here with 3A, C2O4, this is called oxalate. It, it, this is a polyatomic ion you have not seen. So C2O4, this is a polyatomic ion with a charge of minus two. So pause the video, give these a try. And once you are ready, the answers are on the next slide. So here are the answers to those questions. Uh, B and C, I couldn't fit into this page. See the chapter seven group worksheet key for answers to B and C. So that concludes section 7.1. I'll see you in the next video when we begin section 7.2, classifying chemical reactions.